Oof, I was super lucky about this one last night when filming some b-roll with the unreleased anamorphic lens from Fruel for the DJI Pocket 2. I dropped it in the snow and we found it and it's perfectly fine. Uh, but yeah, in this video, let's make a review of it and also talk about what are anamorphic lens, why Hollywood's like using so much these types of lens and if it's a great lens for your DJI Pocket 2. For those of you who are new to this channel, I'm Luke Ben Alford, a young photographer and filmmaker on the journey to become better at this art. Fruel reached out a few weeks ago and offered me to review the new anamorphic lens for the DJI Pocket 2. I never used an anamorphic lens before, so I was really curious to see if this would fit my filmmaking style. Fruel doesn't get to see this video, doesn't pay me, so you get my full unbiased review of this new lens. Have you ever wondered why it's so hard to reproduce the Hollywood look? Well, the one of the reasons is that they use anamorphic lenses. You might not have heard of anamorphic lenses before because they're crazy expensive. When I say expensive, I'm talking about well over $10,000 for a good anamorphic lens. Now the big question is why are those lenses so special? You know the annoying black bars you have on films at the top and the bottom? Well, this very large format is called Cinemascope. It usually has an aspect ratio of around 21 by 9. What an anamorphic lens does is take that footage and squeeze it on a smaller sensor, so let's say 16 by 9. Then when you go in video editing, you take that footage and de-squeeze it. And this process of squeezing and de-squeezing the footage is what creates the very unique look of an anamorphic lens. Now the question is why would you go through all the trouble of using an anamorphic lens? The first reason is for the looks that it creates. So usually an anamorphic lens has a very sharp and detailed center of the picture, but there's a little bit softer edges and also a little bit more distorted edges. And this can create a really cool look when you use it well inside of a film. Another reason is that the background, so the blur in the background, creates oval bokeh. So if you don't know what is bokeh, it's basically the blur in the background. And on most digital cameras, including your cell phone, you usually get really round uh, blur backgrounds in the back where it's more oval using the, uh, the anamorphic lens because you're stretching out the image. And this can create a pretty cool look. Another reason is probably the most common reason why people use anamorphic lens is for the lens flare that it creates. So usually when you have a DSLR or your cell phone and you point something like a flashlight to your camera, it's actually gonna create a flare that goes all around in a circle because your lens is circular. But here, because it's stretching out the image, it's actually gonna create light streaks that are horizontal. And this can create a very stylistic look that is very interesting. It's especially interesting if you're shooting things like music videos or if you're doing a short film or something like that, where you wanna have a much more stylized look in the end. The last reason why it's so useful to use an anamorphic lens is that you don't lose as much information when you have a wide format. So usually when we add the black bars at the top or the bottom, we're cropping inside of the footage and this means you're getting less detail inside of your shot in the end because you're cropping some information at the top and the bottom. But here because you compress and then decompress this image, you actually end up having much more information and much more pixel density inside of your final image, which is also great when you want to use the maximum uh, capacities of your camera. Wow, that was a lot of information. Now with all of this in head, let's talk about the Freewell Anamorphic Lens for the DJI Pocket 2. If you're wondering how it looks, I've been using it since the beginning of this video, so you should have a pretty good idea up to now of if it's working well or not. My favorite feature from this lens is actually that it comes with some ND filters or neutral density filters. ND filters are like sunglasses but for your camera and they're super useful to get a more cinematic image because they also control your shutter speed and get some motion blur inside of the image. So by combining some ND filters and also the anamorphic lens, you get the most cinematic image possible from the DJI Pocket 2. I have a full video that goes in depth to talk about what are end filters and how they work on the DJI Pocket 2. So I'm going to put the link in the description down below if you're interested to learn more about that. What is super clever about these ND filters is that they hold to the back of the lens by using only some magnets so they're super easy to put and remove and you can easily change them as you need. Once this is on you simply have to put the lens on the camera and you're good to go and shoot some footage.
My biggest problem with this anamorphic lens is that the magnets don't always hold it super securely on the DJI Pocket 2. So yesterday I lost it, I also lost it this morning in the snow, so it's twice that it fell down when I had it on the camera. So this is a problem because you need to be very careful when you have it on that you don't drop it by accident because it's so small that it's really easy to lose it if uh, it falls down from the camera. One thing that really scared me with this lens was how it was going to affect the autofocus system on the DJI Pocket 2. Up to now, the anamorphic lens doesn't seem to be affecting at all the autofocus, which is pretty great. And how does it look right now? Because I'm using the autofocus and it's a pretty challenging background. If I bring it closer, does it work better? Does it work worse? Uh, I'm pretty sure it's still just fine right now and it works perfectly fine. Another thing I want to talk about is that this is probably not your best lens for vlogging. So you definitely can vlog like I'm doing right now using the camera. But because of the really wide format, it's a pretty weird format for when you're vlogging because you usually want to have something that is taller, not something that is wider when you're vlogging. So it's maybe not the best lens for vlogging scenarios. But it's definitely a good lens if you want to get more cinematic type of shots. Now the big question is how does it actually perform and how does the image actually work? Up to now it seems to be working really well and you also get really good images that are sharp, there's not much distor distortion and the light leaks are pretty cool. The light leaks might be just a little bit too intense for my taste but that's just a thing of taste. Uh, it doesn't mean that they're bad or anything like that. Now let's go inside so I can show you how to de-squeeze the footage and so we can analyze in more detail exactly uh, the images and see if they're any good or not. Okay, so now let's talk about how we can de-squeeze the footage. For this, I'm gonna be using Premiere Pro because that's my favorite editing program, but you can use whatever else other program, whether it's iMovie, LumaFusion, Adobe Rush, or really any other program that allows you to change the height and width of your footage. So for this, we're gonna jump into the project right here that I have, and we're gonna select all the content and just drop it on the timeline right below. Now, if we play the footage, we're gonna see that it's pretty weird because actually my face is really squished and that's because the content was squished. If we wanna de-squeeze it, we're gonna to have to come inside of the effects controls right here. So we're gonna come in the effects and we wanna change the scale of the height. The problem inside of Premiere Pro is that you cannot change the height and the width separately when you have uniform scale enabled. So we're gonna disable this and now we're gonna be able to change the height and the width independently of the clip. Now, if you're not sure what to enter, we need to look at the specification of the lens and Freewell says that it's a squeeze factor of 1.15. That means that the horizontal, when it's de-squished, is going to be 150%. But we want to change the height, not the width, because we want the width to stay the same. And for this, we're going to need to do a little bit of math. So we're going to multiply 1 times 100 to get in percentage and then divide it by 1.15, which is going to give us about 87%. So if we come right here, we can enter. 87%, click enter, and we're gonna see that uh, right away it looks a lot better. The problem is that it doesn't work exactly like that because the factor how it squishes the content on the middle and the size isn't exactly the same. So I found that in my test, actually 92% is what works the best to get a natural form inside of my face. Then if you didn't know, there's a little trick that you can do inside of Premiere Pro because you don't want to be entering 92 on every single click. And it's to come inside of here and then just uh, right click on our settings that we want to save and we can save it as a preset. So now we can enter a preset name right here and we're just going to call it um, Cinema Scope Freewell. Um, and we're going to click enter to save it. And now if we come on our effects tab right here and we go inside of preset, we're going to see that we have it right here. So if we select all our clips, all we have to do now is select this effect, drag and drop it on the other clips. And now all our clips are correctly de-squeezed. So that was how easy it was to do. Now we have another little problem and it's that we want to get rid of the black bars at the top and the bottom. Instead of Premiere Pro, it's pretty easy to fix. So if we go inside of sequence, sequence setting, we can then change the horizontal height. So here I had a 720p uh, clip just because it's a proxy file that I'm using right now. So we're gonna have to use uh, the calculator for this to be able to know what's the new height. So if we do 92% of uh, 720p, so we're gonna just change the height, it's gonna give us 662.4. So I'm just gonna enter 662, click enter, click okay. And now we're gonna see that we got rid 
of the black bars that were at the top and the bottom. So now if we come, we can do Command M to export the clip, and we're gonna be able to export the clip without any of these annoying borders. And now we have our new format for the clip. I now wanna talk about the image quality of the Freewell anamorphic lens. I really enjoyed that the lens is sharp all over around the image, even if the corners, which is sometimes a problem with cheaper lenses for the DJI Pocket 2. Another really great thing with the Freewell anamorphic lens is that the distortion isn't very distracting, so the sides are still pretty vertical, which is really great because a lot of cheaper lenses, again, are gonna create some distorted edges, which is really annoying. One thing that annoys me just a little bit with this lens is that the squeeze factor doesn't seem to be the same at the center and the sides, so it's a little bit hard on post-processing to find the right height or things like that to make sure that everything looks natural inside of the image. But that's a problem with anamorphic lenses, not just the one from Freewell. The last thing we talk about is color cast, and there's a slight color cast, uh, but that's not a big deal for me because it's really easy to fix it afterwards, and it's almost unnoticeable. The reason you have that color cast is because of the coating they have to put on the lens, because the anamorphic lens doesn't actually stretch enough the image to create the light leaks, so they add something on top to create the light leaks afterwards when the lights pass through uh, the lens. This is very similar to how they do it on a phone, so it might not be the nicest light leaks, but it's definitely what you're used to seeing when taking videos with anamorphic lens on a phone or on the DJI Pocket 2. The big question is should you buy the Freewell anamorphic lens for the DJI Pocket 2? In my opinion, if you want to get the light leaks inside of your video, it's definitely an option worth considering. If you want to buy it to get a little bit more cinematic results, it's still a good option, but you're not going to be getting that very wide uh, cinemascope look. You're still getting a different aspect ratio and you're still getting some of the benefits of uh, anamorphic lens, but it's definitely not as high quality as real professional lens, but that's why you're not paying that crazy high price. Talking of prices, I think that the best option when buying the anamorphic lens is actually to buy it inside of the pack that I have right here. We have a wide angle lens and also the anamorphic lens that work with the same ND filters. This is a kit that costs 100 US dollars. We can also buy each individually with the ND filters for $60 each, but I think it's just better to buy both at the same time and get two lenses plus ND filters in a whole package for a pretty good price, especially when you consider that a DJI official ND filters and when I go lens cost over $110 to get them and they don't even work together. If you're interested in buying the anamorphic lens or the wide angle lens from Freewell for the DJI Pocket 2, go check out the links in the description down below. They might be affiliate links, but this is a good deal for both of us because when you buy the lens using the link, you're actually helping my channel in the end. A few days ago, I published another video testing the Freewell and Anamorphic lens with the DJI Pocket 2 in low light. So definitely go check that one out if you want to see more test footage. As usual, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like below and also consider subscribing to learn more about photography and filmmaking. I'm also going to be releasing a video on the wide angle lens with the ND filters from Freewell, so definitely subscribe if you want to learn more about that. See you in the next one. Bye bye.